Hello and welcome. Oh, that was peaking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Maritime Supernatural Podcast. Yes, episode four. <laughs> so the spookiest number, as we all know. Is it? I, I have no idea. I just said that because we made <laughs> ghost noises. I always thought like three, six, and 13 were like spookier. No, that's fair. Well, I know that four is spooky to like a lot of like East Asian uh, uh communities oh i didn't know that yes because it is the same uh yes the same word for death in japanese and i believe also chinese oh and yes and the word and the number 42 is especially spooky because uh the word for 42 is the word for dying oh yeah so spooky (laughs) it's 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 their number 13 Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, okay one second. I th- think we can hear my partner's TV in the other room, so I'm going to ask him to turn that down Rude. a little bit. Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh. All right, so I guess it's just me for a bit. And I'm all by myself once more. I'm so lonely. Okay, hopefully that oh, oh. will be better. Okay, cool. Both of my cats were waiting at the door. Oh. So when I opened it, they were both like, Hello, Mama, are you ready to pet me now? And I'm like, no, get away from me. <laughs> oh, close story time was it as long as we thought we can come in now. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Little shits. I love cats. They're so No, cute. I love them. They're perfect. perfect. Both of them are perfect and angelic. So now we have to include a picture of my cats on uh, Instagram. I can arrange that. I do have your cats saved on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. I, I know I at least I know I at least have seven in his uh in his tiny little cat bed. Oh yeah, that was cute. <laughs> it's so good. He's doing good on his diet. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so I've got a really tubby cat, and he has been on a diet for a long time, and uh, we're making progress. It's slow, but he's getting there. He's he's wonderful. Yeah. He's, he's the best little tubby cat, and he's never <laughs> done a bad thing in his life. Well, okay, we'll, we'll go with ever. that. We'll go with that. Never, <laughs> ever, and I love him. I've never met him in person, but I know that he's what? perfect. I didn't you hadn't met him oh my god we'll have to fix that at some point yeah i i don't think i've been to your place since like you lived over like like where our friends phil and carmen currently live well he was living there with us then so you must have met him then i i don't know uh we'll fix it we'll we'll get we'll fix no you know what we didn't visit you when you were living there because i think at that point we were I think that's when I was in Moncton. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I we need to fix this. I need to meet your cats. <laughs> we're just <laughs> we're just talking about like nothing. Uh, we're trying to Okay, let's yeah. get let's get to the spooky stuff. Let's get to the spooky. Okay, stuff. okay, okay, okay. Well, first I want to ask uh well, I want to talk about my week. The last week has just been friggin' nuts for yes. your kid. Yeah. Uh <laughs> So I get back from Orlando, and the day I get back from Orlando uh, is the day that we record for the spookening. Yes. Yeah, and so the next day uh, I was editing. It ended up being more of an undertaking than I was expecting, and so I had to edit uh, on 
the day it was supposed to go out as well on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But I got it out, obviously. Yes, and it was excellent. Uh, Yeah, so I hope that people enjoyed it. I hope so too. Yeah, and then uh, Friday evening, uh, I had... Uh, a work meeting with some friends like actual animation work and as I was coming home from that I was like gee my my throat feels weird I hope I'm not getting sick Saturday which is the day of my actual birthday party (laughs) I wake up and I'm like oh no I'm I'm actually very sick I I can tell but I really want to celebrate my birthday with some friends and so I'm like I'm just gonna I'm just going to take a whole lot of meds and I'm going to power through it. I ended up taking a whole lot of meds. I also ended up drinking a lot of soju. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, Sunday, I don't remember much of. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> in fact, I don't remember Sunday at all. <laughs> oh. Uh, Monday is similar. I do remember a little bit of it. So Sunday and Monday were I was just bedridden. I could not get out of bed for the life of me. Um Tuesday, I was like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit better. So I got up to do some groceries and get some humble pie, which is like this meat pie place. Uh, it's a, a New Zealand meat pie place that's in, in Dartmouth. I got halfway through groceries and I was like, I'm feeling faint. I have to oh my go gosh. sit in the car while JF finishes the groceries. Yeah. And then we went to get humble pie. <laughs> and so... Tuesday there was like three hours in of existence mm-hmm. and then that's all I remember holy moly <laughs> and yes so it has been a trip yesterday was much better and Good. then today like I I've had a little bit of of like some nose drips but that's it oh. <laughs> so this is kind of just how I get sick though where it's like oh, I feel weird, and then I'm dead for yes. about three days. Holy and then holy. I kind of bounce back pretty quick. <laughs> well, that's good, though. I I find I get sick, and it kind of lingers for a long time. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll have, like, a nostril clogged for probably, like, another week or so. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it goes from, like... I should maybe probably go to a hospital to no I'm fine I'm I can work like within a couple of days okay holy moly. yeah this yep well, I, I'm glad you're weird. feeling better yeah so some of my notes were done while under the influence of cold medication <laughs> I'm uh, excited. and I Yes, I did have to finish some of them today, but yeah, we we will see what these are like. <laughs> I look forward to it. Yes. So, uh, I, I'm going to get into it. In 2003, mm-hmm. lobster fisherman Wallace Cartwright calls into CBC Radio's As It Happens to tell his unbelievable story. While checking his traps just south of Point Oconee's lighthouse... Something floating at the water surface catches his eye. He believes he's looking at a log until the log raises its turtle-like head and peers back at Wallace. This is going to be a sea monster roundup. Oh, beautiful. I started off doing the Northumberland Strait sea monsters because there are a lot of stories from the Northumberland Strait. Because the water's so nice. Yes, but uh, this does end up kind of bouncing around uh, Nova Scotia a little bit. Okay. Just as a refresher, I've talked about the Northumberland Strait before. It is the section of the Atlantic Ocean that separates PEI from New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And with a depth ranging from 17 to 65 meters, the strait boasts not only the warmest ocean waters in Canada, but some of the warmest ocean waters north of Virginia. So these are weird waters, basically. Like these are It's a good swim. It's a very good swim and it like it's it's very special for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. So the first recorded instance of a sea monster in the Northumberland Strait comes from the 6th century when Irish monk St. Brendan visited the area with a group of his followers. Uh, He writes in his diaries recording the venture that one evening they believed they had landed on a small island, but upon further inspection, to their horror, they had actually landed on the back of the legendary sea monster known as Jinconius. Oh my god. That would suck so bad. It's like, finally, where are the trees with the fruit and where's the, you know, roots we can eat and the berry bushes? Then it's like, ah, nuts. We've landed on an alive thing. On a monster. <laughs> that yeah. sucks. And it's it's such a classic tale. 
But <laughs> so I, I found this in like a few articles talking about uh, the like the sea monsters of the area. And they talk about Jenkonius as if it's something that we should know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I only did like some preliminary research on it, but I couldn't find anything about Jenkonius. No. So I'm like, <laughs> I got to look into this. <laughs> So if I find some more, I'm I'm definitely going to, like, talk more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so skip ahead a couple years. On May 15th, 1833, a small yacht of army men left Halifax on a fishing excursion. They had been sailing west by southwest for five or six hours when they came across a sudden school of dolphin, which, fun fact, they were called Grampuses back then. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> Grampus? They're called Grampuses. Like G R A M P U S. Yep. Oh my god. You got god. it. Hole in one. What the heck? Yeah. I don't know why. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, while they were watching and unfortunately shooting at the dolphins, one of the older warmen shouted that he saw something about 200 meters from the boat. When the others turned to look, they saw, quote, the head and neck of some denizen of the deep, precisely like those of a common snake in the act of swimming, the head so far elevated and thrown forward by the curve of the neck as to enable to see water under and beyond it. Oh, my God. So this is, yeah, this is like the classic sea serpent. So like the pose. head came up. And then it just kept rising out of the water. I think what it was is that it was like moving forward, like it was pushing itself forward. Oh. Yeah, kind of like so diving it's like, in and out. Yes, exactly. Kind of yeah. like how a dolphin swims, but like connected. Yeah, and a serpent. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they watched the serpent for a good half minute, judging the length to be no more than 25 meters, and with the head being about two meters long, and the head and neck being a dark or nearly black color. Oh my god, that's a long head. It's a very long head. In <gasps> October of 1844, William Barry was fishing off the pier at Arisug, Antigonish County, when he spotted movement within 25 meters of the wharf. He spotted a serpent about 60 feet long, which is just under 20 meters, oh my God. and three feet in diameter, which <gasps> is about a meter in diameter. Holy huge. Yeah. So for those of you who uh, don't know how long a meter is, it's about three feet. Uh, <laughs> but if you extend your arms for the average adult human being, it's about from wrist to wrist. Oh, my God. So that's about a meter. <laughs> Barry described the, t- the, the creature as thus. It had natural humps on the back, which seemed too small and close together to be bends of the body. It moved in long undulations, thus causing the head and tail to appear and disappear at, er- at intervals. So he's swimming in the same way that the previous folks saw this other sea serpent. Yeah. Just a year later, in August of 1845, a 25-meter-long dark serpent was spotted just 180 meters from the coast of Marigamish Harbor. Several witnesses reported it as being rough in texture with no fins and would frequently raise its head as it undulated in the shallow water. It managed to make its way back into deeper tides by wriggling itself in and out of circles very quickly. It almost sounds like a giant eel. Yes, right? Only like eels go kind of side to side instead of up and down when they swim, though. Yeah, see, like, I I feel like it's much more like a, a big, like, boa? Do boas, like... They even go side or, like, to anacondas? side when they swim. They don't go... Like, I don't know of anything that I can think of that would go, like, up and down to swim, except yeah. for, like, like, you know, dolphins jump up and down out of the water, but, mm-hmm. like, most serpents that I've seen and, like, eels and everything, they go, like, kind of, like, a side-to-side motion to swim. Yeah. So that's really I'm, weird. I'm kind, I am kind of wondering if that's what they're trying to describe, but it, oh. they, like, it, they're just not describing it well. But it sounds like it's coming out of the water... In like a, you know, an upside down U shape, kind of like near. Yeah, like like what you would typically see, like the the illustrations yes. of sea serpents to look like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like the way that they were talking about it being stuck or like like wriggling in circles very quickly, it makes me think mm-hmm. of like a worm that's stuck in the pavement and is yeah. trying to like make its way back to dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, on August 3rd, 1872, something looking like a large barrel was seen floating on the water off St. Margaret's Bay, and a group of fishermen hopped in a boat to investigate it. <laughs> However, as they got close to it, they realized it was the head of a sea serpent <gasps> who un- undoubtedly startled from its rest, opened its vividly red mouth at them, displaying its many, many teeth. Oh, my God. The men quickly retreated and rowed back to shore. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Think about that for a second, though. So these guys see what they think is a barrel. What did they think was in that mm. barrel? They're like, sweet, look at that barrel. Let's go let's go out there and get that barrel. Like, what did they think was inside? Well, I mean, like, w- this is a, like, a huge fishing area. So yeah. I'm thinking, like, oh, like, a barrel fell off of a boat. We should, like, bring it in. Like, I think, like, rum running was a thing <gasps> back then. So, like, it could have been rum oh. or it could have, like... Yeah. yeah, and so it's like it's either could have been useful or they could have figured out who to, who it belonged to and could have returned it. There could have or... been kind, uh, you know, kind returning sen- sentiments. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yes, and I mean, like this is a time when there wasn't much money being passed around, especially on like folks who are living on the harbor, mm-hmm. and so it could have been something that's just useful to have and every like everything needs to be saved kind of thing and like you would like even if it was just like an empty barrel it's like oh well we can use that <laughs> it could have been old murray trying to get across the strait again it's like oh, i got yeah. myself stuck out there better old go murray. Real woman. Oh, murray. trying to get to the tickle <laughs> always everyone's always trying to get to just the tickle. need to get to the tickle <laughs> So, uh, apparently another rowboat passed the serpent, Mm -hmm. uh, and they got a better look at it, saying that they could easily see nine meters of its length, but judged it to be longer beneath the water. They claim this animal has been destroying people's fishing nets as it can rip through them easily as it swims. And this particular creature appears in the waters of St. Margaret's Bay about once every 10 to 15 years. Wow. Yeah, so, and, like, that's kind of going along with, like, the years that I'm, like, talking about. Because this is 1872 that this happened. Mm -hmm. And then the last time they saw something, it was 1844. So, I guess it's been a bit longer. Mm -hmm. But it still kind of lands on, like, the 20 to 30. So, Mm -hmm. like, maybe they miss it the previous time. But, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, In July of 1879, one Captain Sampson was sailing his schooner through the strait when he saw a, quote, serpent of enormous size, this time clocking in at over 30 meters and whose body was as thick around as a barrel. It was swimming at the time of being spotted and the captain estimated it going about seven knots per hour, which is about 13 kilometers an hour. Uh, for reference, the average human will walk around three to five kilometers an hour. So this thing's kind of booking it through the water. Wow, yeah. But yeah, but I, I also get the impression that it's like, yeah, it, it's a big serpent. It, this is probably like a pretty even pace for it. Yeah. Like, it's just got nowhere else to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a bushy protuberance from the back of the creature's head. Uh, however, none of the men on board the schooner could agree if it was a fin or a mane. What? Can you imagine yes. if it was a mane? Yeah, seriously. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> like something uh, that is a sea creature but also has some kind of hair? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like I'm, I am picturing like deep sea creatures and i'll I'll kind of like go into this a little bit later with like uh skeptics theories okay um and like how they have just these like weird things that just come off of them and like each of them serve different purposes Mm -hmm. but it's like to surface people who are used to surface fish it's like that's really weird yeah (laughs) Yeah. wallace cartwright who is the fisherman from 2003 said of his encounter the creature's snake-like body was about eight meters long smooth and brownish i have been lobster fishing for 30 years this was one distinct animal one i'd never seen before wow so there have been discovered uh mi'kmaq uh petroglyphs which are rock carvings Mm -hmm. uh, of several sea serpents that match these descriptions in what is now cape breton 
Yeah. Um, as well as a great horned serpent who appears frequently in Mi'kmaq oral histories, uh, who is said to come ashore, marry young men from the tribes, and then take them back to her underwater world. Aww. So, like, sea serpents are deep history. Yes. Uh, in, in this area. Like, which makes sense. It's it's a fishing area. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like, we're, we're very... Uh, I was going to say we're very wet. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always, constantly. Yeah. Uh, I I will point out, uh, like, I got a lot of my information from something called the Serpent Chronology. Uh, chron- the- <laughs> <laughs> what a weird name. <laughs> <laughs> the Serpent Chronologies, Sea Serpents and Other mar- Marine Creatures from Nova Scotia's History mm-hmm. by Andrew J. Hebda. Okay. Um, which you can, it's like a little PDF book that you can get from the Nova Scotia Museum. Oh. And you can just go on the website and download it for free. It's it, like, it's very accessible. That's it's really awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 So if this is something that people are interested in looking into more. Like I haven't even begun to really like scratch the surface. Wow. Something that uh, Hebda points out in his book is that sea serpents are very common in western cultures or in european cultures um and so he does suspect that possibly um the stories of uh the Mi'kmaq serpents sea serpents um could have been brought over by early european settlers and then they just kind of made their way into the traditional stories oh yeah, but I'm also like, I don't know that for sure. Like, oh, I yeah. like, <laughs> the, to me, there's no real way to prove that. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's just speculation. Um, mm-hmm. and so for the sake of skepticism, I do have to point out the oar fish. Okay. The giant oar fish is the longest bony fish currently known alive, growing to be as long as eleven meters and can be found in all temperate climate ocean water. As far as we know, it's very rare, uh, but they have washed ashore in all temperate uh, climate ocean water. They do have a bright uh, a bright red mane-like fins on the back of their head, and they tend to surface after storms and when they are sick or dying. I'm so, looking it um, up right now. Oh yes, they're pretty. Fr- they're cool, but they're pretty freaky looking. Yeah, um, and I think they're worth like twelve thousand bells in Animal Crossing. Oh. But that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I had never seen one of these before. Yes, they are very insane. Um, if like even if you go onto the Wikipedia page, they straight up say that oar fish are probably the reason for a lot of sea serpent stories. Wow. It is worth mentioning, however, that they do not have teeth Mm -hmm. and they are a light silver white color. So I think of that story of like the uh, uh, the fisherman coming up to uh, the the head that they thought was a barrel and then the thing opening up its its mouth and showing off its teeth. Uh And like all of these descriptions distinctly saying that they are a dark brown or nearly black color. But this thing's like beautiful. It almost looks like it's made out of a rainbow or something. (laughs) Oh yeah. And what's what's really neat is that they all have their individual markings on them. And like the markings can be like black stripes or whatever, but they definitely have that silvery sheen on them. Like they are a light color. So like they'll have like black stripes or blue spots yeah. and like really cool individual like styles but when they die those stripes they disappear they're very quick to disappear and wow. so i'm like that's kind of cool that yeah. like i get the impression that they make their own stripes and yeah. so like they 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 present themselves how they want to be presented like and it's like that's cool yeah. or like if it means something about their maybe time of the month or something you know it's like oh yes yeah maybe yeah yes let's let's get these eggs fertilized (laughs) 
Um, they are also deep sea creatures living about 200 to 1,000 meters below the surface Whoa. where there is very little current and they therefore do not develop the muscle mass needed to survive closer to the surface. Ah. Or fish also do not swim by undulating their whole body like a snake, but by keeping their body straight and simply moving their large dorsal fin. No of way. Course being a, <laughs> but of course, being a fish, they would have no need or desire to raise their head above the surface. Right. So, like, for sure, there are some stories in here that it's like, yeah, that that just sounds like an oar fish. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they're talking about the mane and stuff like that or like a turtle like head. Like, yeah. I find that uh, an oar fish does have a very turtle like face. Yeah, it's kind of like snubby. Yes. Yeah. And like they are a, about a meter around, which uh, like I would say that's about the size of a barrel. Yeah. Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. Yeah, but then it's like, but then there's other stuff that just doesn't Does not add, up. add up. Yes, yeah. Because, like, even if this thing opened its mouth, and even if it did have teeth, there's no way its mouth would open wide enough for you to see the teeth because that mouth is yeah, so Yeah, it's, it's a little fish mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like, bah, yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so that is a little mini sea monster roundup. That's my first try at a roundup. Yeah, that was um, really interesting. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like I went through, like, a lot of information very quickly. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to try really hard because last episode was the lighthouse and I feel like I had nothing. No. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna do my best to deep dive, but I'm also <laughs> just coming out of a really bad cold. So I did a deep dive as much as I meant to. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was good. That was really interesting. And I, I mean, oh, I had you. never heard of an oar fish before. So that was also very interesting. Yes. Oh, they're, they're super cool, like. I can definitely see why you olden people would be like, what the heck? Yeah. Like, what is this? And I can see, like, uh, if nobody at home is looking at a picture of one, it does have, like, this red, um, right at the top of its head, it does have something that kind of does look like hair, <laughs> like these long red mm-hmm. fins that kind of do look like some hair or something. So I can see why that could be mistaken for a mane of some kind. Yes. Yeah, and... Jill, I just sent you on Discord uh, some United States Navy SEALs holding a seven meter giant orfish. Oh my god. Yeah, just to give you an idea as to how massive seven meters is. Mm-hmm. So when they're like, yeah, it was like 15 meters, it's like twice that. Like, Holy. <laughs> there's uh, how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, about 16, 17 people holding this seven meter or And there's room for more of them too. There's hold definitely too, room yeah. for more. Yes. Yeah. And wow. it is quite large. Like they are holding it with their whole arms. Mm-hmm. The guy in the middle looks like he's naked and just wearing socks and shoes. So that's interesting. <laughs> he's just wearing an oar fish and his footwear. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's on the giant oarfish Wikipedia if anybody wants to check that image out. <laughs> I assure you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> they all look pretty stoked to be holding this freaky thing. I do not blame them one bit. Yes. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. What you got for me? I've got a cryptid as well. Ooh. So, have you ever heard of the Dover Demon? It sounds familiar, but I'm also of an animation background, so I'm Fair. like the Dover Boys. Uh, <laughs> I hope that they're not related. <laughs> Will it drive me to drink? <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, I have my tea here, so okay, perfect. it's all good. Okay. I'll start with, I guess, the little story. So... In Dover, Massachusetts, where I think you were fairly recently, were you not in Massachusetts? I was, I was in Massachusetts, yeah. yes. So in 1977, there were a few different incidences of this creature being seen. Three teenagers saw the creature uh, under different circumstances. So one group of these teenagers were driving in their car and they saw this large-headed, baby-bodied, long-limbed thing. Excuse me? Okay, let's do that again. So large, <laughs> large headed, large headed, baby bodied, baby bodied, a tiny little like an body, infant? like yeah, like they compared it to the like a a a, ch- a baby's body, like a baby's uh-huh. body, and long limbs with like long fingers. I... 
coming off. I am sweating. I I hate long limbs. So this thing has like a watermelon shaped head, a really thin Mm. neck, spindly limbs. No. No. And uh, someone, one of the sources compared its body not to a baby, but to like an emaciated monkey. No. Yeah. So these people. I don't know which is worse. (laughs) So these people were driving along in their car. And they see this thing out on the road in front of them. And they stop the car and they're, the, the he- headlights are shining on it. And then it turns its head to look right in the headlights. And these huge eyes are glowing this like amber color. I just Google image searched it and my blood ran cold. <laughs> so uh, I hate this already and please keep going. So Okay. So, so anyway, I think, you know, they drove away and they, they talked about it and people were skeptical well that was that yeah yeah they, they got away so another story another story i think i think around a similar time had a teen walking home at dusk and they saw someone walking towards him mm-hmm. so he thought he knew them so he called out uh and this other person what well what he thought was a person ran into the woods <gasps> oh, so God. instead of you know forgetting about it and heading home he decided to follow why i do not know so he follows this thing into the woods and the thing had already climbed up this hill side and he looks up and it's silhouetted at this point and he sees this silhouetted figure so he had a he said that the head was shaped like an eight, so like two lumps on top of each other, like this sort of watermelon, oh. but like a dip in the middle. So in figure eight head. With lovely lady lumps. Lo- lovely lady lumps on the head. Um, so figure eight shaped head, a skinny body, long toed feet that were wrapped around no. a rock. No. <laughs> and I refuse. Yeah. And there are multiple drawings from different people of this creature, and the drawings look remarkably similar. Uh... So, more recently... Oh, God, if you say it's in my area. In Nova Scotia. No, that's my area. (laughs) (laughs) So, more recently, like, within the past 20 years, I'm guessing, like, judging by this. That's when I was around. (laughs) There were a few kids that swear they saw a similar creature. So, they went off into the woods and they were following this um, creek and they were near the Bay of Fundy. That's where I'm from, <laughs> Jillian. So, I keep getting more and more upset. I'm beaking, Jill. <laughs> me too, me too. Okay. So, they were out in the woods. I think they were going fishing. There were three of them. And they, so they were walking along and they had gone out pretty far and then they had to get home because they didn't want to be out in the dark. I don't blame them. And they saw this thing up in a tree. Mm. And it was like this, I think it, so it had green skin in this recount. So I'm not sure if it's the same creature, but this one, it didn't say skin color in the other ones, but this one I think specified green. And so this thing was up in the tree. So it was like holding on with its long skinny fingers and its (laughs) thin limbs. And it was just clinging to this tree. And it's long toes. Long toes wrapped around the branches and no <laughs> this kid saw it and he his instincts told him that it was pure evil yeah i don't know how he could tell specifically probably the long toes <laughs> <laughs> the longer your toes the closer you are to evil never trust a long toed sloth <laughs> never okay so the part that I think gets kind of freakier in this instance oh, God. is that it didn't just stay in the tree to, like, oh, no. let them walk away. It leapt <gasps> from tree to tree, coming closer. No! That's the that's the worst! So they took off, you know, obviously. They ran, <laughs> and they were running out through the woods. And as soon as they were far, like, a bit far away... And, you know, they were screaming a bit and running away. Yeah, as you would. They hear a loud, high-pitched scream from the creature as they ran away. (laughs) And it just kept going. Like, it didn't just... It wasn't just, like, one, like, "Eh!" It was just this long, continuous scream 
that just echoed through these woods as they took off and ran away. That's me screaming through time, <laughs> and they're now hearing me. They're hearing me scream as I learn about this through time. Yeah. So they run home. They get to this one kid's house, and his grandmother's there. And they tell her about what they saw, and they're explaining it. And she doesn't really believe them. And she goes, listen, you each go to a corner of the room, and you draw what you saw. And we'll, you know, we'll, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll see if your stories cooperate. So they did. They went to each corner of the room. And apparently, there was no copies of the drawings online that I could find. But apparently, all three of the drawings were of the same creature. Same shape, same you know, gangly limbs, big head, long big toes. eyes, long toes. I thought that was kind of interesting. So the, this person's theory is that since Nova Scotia is just, you know, north and a bit, I guess, more east, just because that's how the coast goes. <laughs> so it's just more, you know, we're up above and, and to the east coast and whatever that this creature like traveled up. You could say the northeast. I could, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> So up north and a bit east. Or something like that. That it, it, it yes. you know, it crawled its way up and then and, and stayed oh, around crawled. the east coast. So, um, or I guess jumped from tree to tree. I'm not sure. Uh, no, Jill. <laughs> so also during my research, I ran into this other kind of creature. And I don't know if it's related. But in 2003, some kids were in the woods. And this was in Nova Scotia as well. And they were walking through the woods, and then suddenly everything went dead silent. Oh, that's never a good sign. Like, there were no birds chirping, there were no bugs buzzing, even the breeze seemed to take a break. And then they heard a loud bone-rattling scream. Oh, no. And it scared them so bad. Like, it didn't sound human, and it scared them so bad they just ran off. And, uh, like, like, yeah. So I'm not sure if that's at all related, but... I mean, screaming things in the woods. I don't know. It was probably like in the trees above them. Oh and my they god! Didn't look up. <sighs> yeah, this is where my imagination goes. This is why I can't be trusted with scary stories. Why are we doing this podcast? It Jill? was. It was <laughs> your idea to finally this was my start idea. the podcast. <laughs> we have been joking about it forever, and you were like, "Jill, do you want to?" And I said, "Yes." You you brought this upon yourself. I know. I know, Jill. <laughs> I know this to be true. <laughs> so yeah, that is my oh my that is my research on the Dover Demon. Let me see. Is that? Oh, and the reason it was called that. Oh, I might have mentioned already, but because uh, the original sighting in 1977 was around Dover, Massachusetts. There are some very very creepy drawings and images on google image search yeah like extremely unsettling yeah uh, some things i saw like they relate it to kind of what they think an alien would look like you know with the bulbous Mm -hmm. eyes and the big head and the no hair yes the long limbs it's very it's very alien like like i find that the drawings are very alien like yeah but then the like real life um renditions mm-hmm. kind of they make it they definitely make it more cryptid yeah like they it looks almost like a, a zombie kind of thing yeah yeah i agree with that wow <laughs> that is so wild yeah so uh on that note can i tell you a story of a time that i ran away from some woods <laughs> yes i swear to god if you tell me there's a demon no no okay so my my very best friend growing up and i uh we were and we're still best friends to this day Mm -hmm. shout out to you alicia i know you'll never listen to this because you don't like scary stories uh but uh (laughs) so we were walking in our neighborhood down home in sydney cape breton and we were walking by the trails near our house because we we lived like if our, our streets made an L so we could like walk and meet in the middle and around the middle was where these trails were. Mm-hmm. So we were walking by this at night and it was this beautiful winter night and we were looking up at the moon and it was huge and full and these snowflakes were just falling and it was just this gorgeous walk and you know you're stepping and each step is a crunch beat when you're on the snow like you're just crunching along yeah so it was oh, this... that crunch of snow oh so good so we were just having a nice little walk and we're looking up at the moon and i think i was probably saying something about how beautiful it was 
And then I hear Alicia gasp. And I look at her and she's looking into the woods of the trail with a look of sheer terror and horror on her face. So instantly my blood ran cold and I whipped my head around to look into the trail as well to see what she could see. And all I could see was this deep blackness, just nothing. Like it was just this dark, deep blackness. Like the moonlight was not hitting it because the trees was just shading the path. Mm -hmm. So I look back up and she has booted it about halfway up the hill and just left me there. (laughs) So Alicia, I know. (laughs) So she's booting her up the hill and I'm just like, what the heck? And I just chase up after her and I'm like, what did you see? Why did you, why did you just leave me there? And she goes, I thought you saw it too. Oh. And I never did find out what she saw because she never, I don't think she ever told me. (laughs) You, you have to like, okay, Jill, this is, this is now your homework. (laughs) Yeah, no, Jill, you have to you have to talk to her. You have to. You no, know, she'll just think because I bring it up a lot to her because I, I use it as kind of like, remember that time you abandoned me to whatever was hiding in the woods? You left me for dead for yeah. this de- Dover demon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I never did. And, and I mean, I don't even know if she really saw anything or if she just got the willies from looking into that deep dark blackness the void of the woods at night i don't know but i'll try and talk to her about it without poking fun we'll see no yeah tell her that you're doing a spooky podcast and your co-host has to know what she saw (laughs) i i did tell her about the podcast and she said i don't think i'll ever be able to listen to it (laughs) yeah no totally fair tell her she doesn't have to but she does have to tell us what happened (laughs) okay i'll try and uh i'll try and wring that information out of her at some point yeah uh (laughs) this this makes me actually think of a story this is a a friend's story um it's my friend elise boudreau oh yes yeah and i i would love to get her to like send in this story i'm not sure if she listens to the podcast yet but um (laughs) but she will (laughs) but she will god damn it uh she's not much of a podcast listener anyway like gotcha gotcha yes yeah um But I remember her telling me a story about how she and her best friend, Steph, were walking in the woods with their babysitter. They they live next door. So oftentimes they they just had the same babysitter when their parents had uh, gone out for their nine to five work. Um, And they came across these old these like uh, rabbit tracks. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the order in which this goes, but Mm -hmm. The babysitter is like, you know, it's winter, it's it's snowy, so the babysitter is like, oh, let's follow these tracks and see where they go. A foolish errand. They follow the tracks, and inexplicably, these tracks turn into, like, cat tracks. And then okay. they turn... Yeah, and then they turn into, like, dog-like tracks. Mm-hmm. And then they turn into what appear to be, like, bear tracks. What and the fuck? yeah, so like Elise is like, you know, they were pretty young, so she's like, yeah. yeah, maybe we're misremembering, but like both of them remember this so vividly, yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that it's like, yeah, I thought she you just... were going to say human tracks, and I was gonna, pull yeah, my chair, yeah, Skinwalker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so, like, apparently the uh, babysitter was like, let's not see how far this goes, and uh, turned them around yeah. and brought them back. <laughs> Good call. Good yes. call. Yeah, for sure. I feel it's one of those things that it's like, yeah, if I didn't have two small children in tow, I yeah. might have gotten curious and checked it out if I had a friend with me kind of thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Definitely not going to check it out on my own. <laughs> no. Nope. Never. No thanks. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. i yeah i think we're we're done it's it's pretty late we usually record yeah. in the mornings and i'm getting pretty tired <laughs> yeah me too i feel yeah. like like our time changed recently as well so we're pretty beat and like i've just had i've also had a wild week so i'm yeah I'm your week has yeah. been pretty rough yeah yeah 
All right. So we'll we yeah. will wrap it up. Thank yeah. you for listening to Thank us. Thank you yet so again. much. Thank you so much for listening to us. Uh do and you want to if wanna... this was your first episode, I hope to see you again. Yes, absolutely. Do you wanna shout out our email address, Jill? Sure do. <laughs> you can I... <laughs> Because I totally know. I'm just trying to mix I things totally up. I know what it is. Um, if you, if you want to email us your unexplained or creepy or spooky or maybe even warm but a little chilling <laughs> uh, stories, you can email us at maritime supernatural at gmail dot com. Yeah, uh, and you can find us on social media right now. We are on Twitter and Instagram at MSN Podcast, and you can find us on YouTube at Maritime Supernatural Podcast. All of our episodes are uploaded there as well. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening, and thank you to Daniel Luke for the amazing intro. He's an amazing artist, animator, and musician, composer. I like your word composer that you used in episode three uh so i'm gonna use that <laughs> music composer uh you can find more of his work at webot15.com that's w-e-b-b-o-t 15.com thank you for joining me here today jill thank you yeah and again thank you to the listeners and we'll, we will see you in two weeks bye now i love you rip in peace Me, 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 me